Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student and I'd like to welcome you to possible essay number 3. This essay is for paper 1 question 5 just like the first two essays on this playlist and also the next three which will also be on this playlist. I'll now hand the lesson over to Cardin. Over to you Cardin. Thanks Viola. Uh, good day grade 12s. And uh, in this lesson, we're going to talk about features and happening forecasting. So what's important with this one? Uh, well, first and foremost, it's an easy, easy, easy um, essay. And it's one that would warp, it comes, hey? Then you guys can uh, be guaranteed of those distinctions. Now, this essay, uh, the first thing you must talk about indicators. Uh, each of the four indicators, leading, lagging, coincident, and composite. Now, take note that so many textbooks do not have composite indicators. So, uh, okay, you will see it here. Uh, maybe write down those notes when we get to composite indicators. And then we have other things that we used in forecasting, like um, the length, the amplitude, the trend line, extrapolation, and moving average. So stay tuned. And um, yeah, let's get down with the lesson. Features underpinning forecasting. So economic indicators used for forecasting. Let's look at them. Uh, I mentioned them in the introduction, but now let's go into depth with each and every one of them. So an economic indicator is a statistic and you know statistics are numbers. Okay, so it is a statistic about economic activity. So we all know that we measure economic activity using the, the the main thing that we use to measure economic indicator or economic activity is real gdp okay which is the total market value of all final goods and services produced within the borders of a country over a specific period of time usually over a year so uh economic activity okay usually of macroeconomic scale uh, we also talked about this word macroeconomics means i said macro means big so when we study macroeconomics we are studying the economy as a whole we are not looking at individual businesses individual households like that we are covering the whole economy as a whole so these indicators are covering uh, the whole economy as a whole okay so let's have a look at what indicators we are talking about they are used to interpret the overall health, so that means is our economy healthy or not, of the economy, uh, either current or future, and even previous, uh, even the past, okay, current or future. They show the way or direction in which the economy is moving, right, so uh, these indicators are classified into four categories. Uh, we used to classify them into three according to our CAP syllabus, but we added one. Okay, so according to their usual timing in relation to the business cycles. So remember, we are still on business cycles, uh, which is um, successive periods of fluctuations in economic activity. So what is it that we use to predict? By the way, I didn't talk much about this word here forecasting to forecast is to sort of predict think about uh weather forecast they tell us what's going to happen tomorrow next week next whatever uh you know and so in economics we also do this forecasting i also mentioned it in the introduction all right uh so what are they we have number one leading indicators so we are going to go in in depth with this one uh, just now and then we have lagging indicators we have coincident indicators and we also have composite indicators so let's go to leading indicators and see what they are so leading indicators are indicators that usually change before the economy as a whole changes so the key word here is before so these indicators they start to show signs uh, before the, in the, the the economy as a whole changes. All right, uh, let me give you this example. So with indicators, is there anything that can tell you that uh, it's going to rain, for example, 
All right, I always use this example. So let's assume that um, you look outside. Is there anything that can tell you that it's about to rain? Of course, the clouds. If you look at the clouds, if you just look at how it looks outside, uh, you can confirm that it's, it's, it's probably going to rain. You might be wrong, but the, the fact remains uh, it can tell you that there is a good chance of raining. Then maybe you need to carry your umbrella or you need to use, um, let's say, Uber instead of public transport because maybe it's going to drop you exactly where you want to go. But that thing that tells you before it rains that it's about, to, it's going to rain, uh, whatever it is, it's leading. So the same happens to an economy. There are certain things that will tell us that a recession is coming. There are things, uh, I'll give you the examples of all the things uh, just now. Uh, so it will tell us that a recession is coming, a depression is coming and things like that. Right, so as you have seen from the example, right, they show us or lead where the economy is going, just like we saw in the example. They arrive at the turning point, peak and trough before the economy does. So just like the word suggests, they are leading. So before we reach a peak, they are there already. Uh, so in other words, they show us that a peak is coming. You will see examples of those just now. They are therefore useful as short-term predictors. Uh, so to predict the long, t the, the the short term, we make use of these leading indicators. Okay, uh, stock market returns are a leading indicator. Okay, this is one of the examples, but I'll give you a whole list of these indicators. So the stock market usually begins to decline. Uh, most likely, actually, the bond market uh, could be doing it before the stock market actually does it. So the stock market usually begins to decline before the economy as a whole declines and usually begins to improve before the general economy begins to recover from a slump. Like where we are currently, uh, today the stock market was actually from yesterday, the stock market was doing quite well. You might be wondering what's the date today. Today is the 8th of February. So if you check the data in future, you, you might want to see what I'm talking about. So yes, you will see that the stock market was going up today. Okay, other leading indicators include the index of consumer expectations, building permits, and the money supply. They give consumers or businesses and the state a glimpse of the direction in which the economy might be heading. So for that reason, we say they are leading. Okay but they are not always accurate uh, take note of that okay other examples we have job advertising space just think about it for a minute how many companies are advertising right now or, or at that particular point in time the, uh, if there are many it might be leading it might be an indicator that oh the economy is about to go you know up as more people start to employ that could be an indicator or if we look at job ad advertising space and we see that oh companies are not advertising these days that could be an indicator that whew, a, a recession is probably coming so these show us way before the economy does whatever it is that it has to do uh inventory and sales uh we look at stock in comp in businesses you know, that could tell us and sales that every company is making. So if a business sees that they are not selling, they, they, they begin to, you know, retrench and that retrenchment will come later on, but something will have told the business to, 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 to retrench. And so as many people begin to lose their jobs, we then go through a recession, but all that could have been shown or all these indicators might have shown way before it actually happens. Or what if there is more inventory or what if sales go up? That could be an indicator as well. You know, businesses will begin to employ and it might be an indicator that we are about to turn around. Uh, let's say we have reached a trough. Let's say we've been going. Uh, okay. Let's say, look at what's happening right now. Uh, 
right now what's really happening is we're going through lockdown and things are bad uh, and this has been happening since last year and so if we think about it for a minute uh, if sales begin to increase in shops what is going to happen they will, those shops will begin to hire to recruit and then as that happens uh, you see that um, it might be an indicator that we are going uh, to recover. Okay. Uh, average uh, weekly hours worked in manufacturing. Okay. I'm not going to go in depth with each. So just make sure you find a few that you are going to master because in an exam, we can never ask you to list any seven. Uh, examples of leading indicators we can never do that the maximum we can ask you is two maybe like look at question 2.1.1 name any two or give any two examples of leading indicators for two marks then you say job advertising space inventory or inventory and sales okay we we pronounce it differently uh, okay, then the next one, manufacturers, uh, new orders for consumer goods and materials. If you want to analyze each and every one of them, yes, you can do it. Uh, you can try to make sense out of this. You can try to think, how could this possibly lead? How could it? Because we are calling it leading indicators. So if you want to understand it more, you can also research. But use your mind to try and reason why would we say these are leading indicators okay vendor performance manufacturers new orders for non-defense capital goods all this uh okay i'm not going to go through each and every one of these but look at these for a while money supply interest rate spread and so on index of consumer expectations new uh, net new companies registered think about that one number of new vehicles sold all these will tell us something okay all right like i said i'm not going to go in depth with each and every one of these but i hope it's going to help then we move on to lagging indicators so what are they uh as the word suggests lagging come on what could this mean lagging indicators are indicators that usually change after so our keyword here is after after the economy as a whole changes uh, let me give you an example so for our third indicator which is lagging indicators you can see from the word uh, lagging it's coming behind all right so with my example i'd say uh let's say it was you were sleeping last night something said it's going to rain you didn't see it because you were sleeping and then it started raining you couldn't tell because you were sleeping you slept like a baby and my question is in the morning is there anything that can confirm that it was raining last night of course if you go outside and look at the grass if you look at the ground uh you know outside you can tell there are things that will tell you that it really rained last night even though you didn't uh, realize that it was raining so my point here is uh leading indicators it's like before it rains something that tells you that it's going to rain is what i'm comparing to leading indicators because they tell us before a recession core incident indicators it's when it's raining uh, I'm, I'm saying like that because, uh, let's say during a recession, the things that happen during a recession, they confirm that we are in a recession. And lastly, a uh, coincident indicator, uh, it will, uh, okay, maybe not lastly because uh, we're going to have composite, but I'm not going to give an example on composite. All right, so those ones will, uh, lagging, they will confirm that there was, uh, what do you call it? A recession just like raining they will confirm that it was raining last night okay so as you have seen from the example they peak after the level of the economy and the core incident indicators so they are lagging behind they are doing whatever it is that they are doing after the economy has already done it typically uh, the lag is a few quarters of a year the unemployment rate is a lagging indicator. Okay, already you are seeing an example. Uh, employment tends to increase two or three quarters uh, after an 
an upturn of the general economy lagging indicators won't change direction until after the business cycle has changed its direction so they are always lagging examples we have hours worked in construction total of commercial vehicles sold all these i'm not going to go in depth with each and every one of them but you can look at them if you want to individually analyze each and every one of them you are more than welcome okay moving on to the next one coincident indicators uh these ones um as you will see in my example just now uh coincident indicators change at approximately the same time as the economy as a whole uh, thereby providing information about the current state of the economy so as you can see from the definition these ones uh, they change at the same time so uh, i'm going to underline this this one here same time they are happening so as the economy goes up they are going up when it reaches a peak they reach a peak so they sort of confirm that yes we are truly in a recession and uh, here's my example so just like leading indicators Coincident indicators are those indicators that confirm that we are in a recession. So these indicators, they happen at approximately the same time as uh, what's really happening in the economy. Uh, using my rain example, uh, I can say when it's raining, when it's actually raining, can you tell that it's raining? Of course, if you go outside, you can tell that, oh yes, it's raining, you get wet. So whatever it is that confirms that it's raining when it's actually raining, in this case is what I'm giving an example uh, and saying it is a coincident indicator because it's happening at approximately the same time as say a recession, as a depression and things like that. Okay, so as you have seen from the example, uh, a coincident uh, index may be used to identify after the fact the dates of peaks and troughs in the business cycle. Examples, we have a number of employees on non-agricultural payrolls, personal income less transfer payments, uh, industrial production, and so on. Like I said from the previous ones, uh, just find a few examples that you can remember. You can always remember. You can make use, if it comes like an essay, an essay, you can also give a couple of examples, but two is maximum, I would say. So don't try to, you know, uh, master everything here. Just find a few that you will always remember. Then the last one or the fourth one, is a composite indicator and th as the word suggests and if you saw my uh you know my like the way i said composite in the introduction i put my hands together like this i was trying to you know show that yes it's all the other indicators put in one let me put it that way so a composite indicator is a summary of various indicators so what are those indicators uh leading lagging co coincident of the same time into a single index so we are it's a, it's sort of a bundle so we put them together that is what is meant by composite anyway the word composite means that all right the three composite indicators leading lagging and coincident are often used to calculate a single composite indicator to benchmark a country's economic performance. A composite indicator measures multi-dimensional dimensional, uh, concepts, e.g. competitiveness, e-trade, or environmental quality, which cannot be captured by a single indicator. Ideally, a composite indicator should be based on theoretical framework which allows the individual indicators to be selected, combined and weighed in a manner which reflects the dimensions or structure of the economy being measured. All right, so as you can see here, uh, let's say always this is our time and this is economic activity. So let's say GDP, okay? So uh, this one here, let's say, okay, let me, let me just find somewhere where I'm going to draw a line. Okay, so if I draw this line, let's say time is moving. Let's say this is March. So who got to March 
first it was this dotted line here you see okay and so it's actually leading so this thing is showing oh, oh let me put this line here okay so March April so let's say this is April and in April some things begin to happen that confirm that we have reached a trough but in reality this line here it shows you that we are still going down but these things are already confirming that yes finally we have reached a trough and we are about to turn around okay and uh it's so this one here shows us sort of a depression and if you look here on the same line this one is still thinking or, or, or saying it is a recession because remember we have a recession let's say this part here recession and then we have a depression this part here this part here so uh if you see here the leading indicator is already on the trough it's already turning around but the the com the coincident is still on a uh, depression and the last one which is the lagging look here it's still on a recession so it will still go to uh, by the time okay let me draw another line here this was march april may so let's say in may what's going on with the with the composite here ah, not the composite the coincident the coincident is now saying oh we are now on uh, what do you call it trough but let's go up with the line here what is this this is the lagging the lagging is saying what okay let me let me say leading coincident and lagging okay i'll just do this for the month of uh, let me start with april so in the month of april the leading is saying uh trough the coincident is saying depression the lagging is saying what a recession yeah something like this and let's look at the month of may if let's say i go to the month of may let me see the first thing i see here is the 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 what the coincident it's saying trough so i'll come here and put a t so this one is saying trough and if i go up i reach here this is depression for lagging then i continue with my line here it's saying recovery already so if you see the leading when it says recovery this one is still saying what we are reaching a trough which is the the actual time here and this one is still going down uh, if if i may put it that way so i'm trying to sort of make a model to make you understand that leading indicators would turn before the economy turns and then lagging indicators will turn way after the economy has already turned so i was just trying to I, I hope this thing this whole thing here is not going to confuse you uh there is no way you are going to draw something like this in an exam to try and explain uh, i'm just doing it for you to understand if i draw some lines remember we're saying this is a timeline so if it's a timeline we can put it in months in days in years it's up to us so this i could say 20 2018 here and i'll say 2019 something like that so whatever it is i do uh, as long as i'm showing that it's a timeline time is moving from january to february to march uh, it can help you understand what i'm trying to explain or what it is actually okay over to you viola Thanks Cardin, the next essay is one of the easiest in our syllabus and Cardin has instructed me to present it and I'm so excited. Make sure you watch it guys. It says discuss in detail macroeconomic objectives. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the distinction bound student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, complete and no answers versions. 
Complete versions have answers and no answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless. Thank you.